Praise the Lord and hello everyone. Welcome to the weekly message from World Gospel Mission Church. Before we hear the seasonal message, let us begin first with the word of God from Psalm 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in Him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Because he hath set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Today's word comes from Song of Solomon chapter 2 verse 14 through 16. O my dove, that art in the clefts of the rock, in the secret places of the stairs, Let me see thy countenance, let me hear thy voice, for sweet is thy voice, and thy countenance is calmly. Take us the foxes, the little foxes that spoil the vines, for our vines have tender grapes. My beloved is mine, and I am his, he feedeth among the lilies. Father God, we are gathered in the name of Lord Jesus Christ to hear your word today. We pray for the anointing of the Holy Ghost unto each and every soul hearing your word. Receive wisdom and understanding of your words of prophecy. May we all hear and keep your word of truth in our heart, providing us discernment of the times and seasons. In Christ Jesus' name we pray, Amen. The Song of Solomon is called the Song of Songs. Not only is it a beautiful song, but it is a love duet between the Lord Jesus Christ, the King of Kings, Lord of Lords, God the Creator, and His Bride. A duet incomparable to even the world's greatest opera performance. It is a superbly beautiful love duet sung in the Holy Ghost between the Christ and Christians who are the Bride of Christ, who have received eternal life through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the present world, ruled by the devil, Satan, The Bride of Christ is held in the bosom of Christ, and through deep fellowship with Him through prayers, she enjoys the righteousness, peace, and joy of the Kingdom of God, and is able to overcome the persecutions of the world. King Solomon spoke of the situation of the Shulamite in her world. Now Solomon's words are also the words of the Lord Jesus Christ to his bride, the Church of God. 
O oh my dove, that art in the clefts of the rock, in the secret places of the stairs, let me see thy countenance, let me hear thy voice, for sweet is thy voice, and thy countenance is comely. Song of Solomon 2 verse 14 In order to protect his bride from the attacks of the devil Satan, the Lord is hiding her in secret places upon a steep mountain. He is calling the bride to show her face from the hidden places. The Lord, who sees his bride like a dove, is calling the bride to be comforted by looking at him only, even in the midst of extreme hardships. The Lord says, that the bride's voice speaking to him in prayer is sweet even during persecutions, and that the bride's appearance is beautiful. A man of God, Moses, confessed to the Lord in prayer. Again from Psalm 91, verse 1 through 3, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. Martin Luther, who rose up against the Roman Catholic Church and led the Reformation, professed his faith in one of his hymns. God is our refuge strong. Let all find welcome here. Here though earth stand no more, though oceans rage and roar and break the mountains o'er, we shall not fear. Desperately wanting to see the glory of God, Moses asked. In Exodus, Exodus 33, verse 18 through 23, And he said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee, and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee, and will be gracious to whom? I will be gracious, and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. And he said, Thou canst not see my face, for there shall no man see me and live. And the Lord said, Behold, there is a place by me, and thou shalt stand upon a rock, and it shall come to pass, while my glory passeth by, that I will put thee in a cliff of the rock and will cover thee with my hand while I pass by, and I will take away mine hand, and thou shalt see my back parts, but my face shall not be seen. No one could see God until Jesus Christ shed his blood to take away the sin of the world. But Christians whose sins are forgiven and washed away by the blood of Christ, become his bride, can see and have fellowship with him in the Holy Ghost in prayer. Moses longed to see the glory of God so that he could commune with him, in fellowship like the Shulamite singing a love do it with the Lord. Over 500 hymns are love do it's sung by the bride of Christ like the Shulamite, with Christ in her fellowship with him. Apostle Paul pleaded with the suffering saints at the time. 
Philippians 4, verse 6 and 7. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. The Apostle Paul wrote a letter of consolation to the saints in fellowship with Christ. 1 Corinthians 13, verse 12 For now we see through a glass, darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. King Solomon made a request to the Shulamite. Song of Solomon 2, verse 15 Take us the foxes, the little foxes, that spoil the vines, for our vines have tender grapes. One day, a little fox disguised as a serpent appeared to Adam and Eve, who were in fellowship with God, walking with him daily in the Garden of Eden. They failed to catch the little fox. The little fox appeared to separate the first man from God. It tempted them so that they may not be able to have fellowship with God. God had told the first man, of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. The fox, who came to the Garden of Eden disguised as a serpent, seduced Eve and said, Yea, had God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Eve was deceived by the little fox and said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. She had told the little fox things that God had not told her. Just then, the little fox said to Eve to spoil the vines in the Garden of Eden, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. At that very moment, the woman looked at the tree, and that one glance caused her to sin, and thus not only herself, but all mankind have been born in sin, so that they could not have fellowship with God. Because of the first man, all human beings have lived in sin, death, and curses. Therefore, God took pity on the world where fellowship with God was cut off. God has given life to those who believe in Jesus Christ and receive salvation through the sinless blood of His only begotten Son so that we are able to have fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ through the Holy Ghost. In order to separate the church of God, which became Eden through the blood of Jesus Christ, the devil Satan is still trying to spoil the vines as a little fox. This little fox is still tempting the bride of Christ for her to commit sins to prevent her fellowship with God. Through the Apostle John, God gave a testimony about the restoration of fellowship between Christ and and the bride. 1 John 1 verse 6 through 9 If we say that we have fellowship with him, and walk in darkness, we lie, and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ his Son cleanseth us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness.
Even now, the little foxes who attack whenever they have time to spoil the vines are making God's children look at abominable things in order for them to commit sins. Therefore, we must always watch and pray and catch those little foxes in the name of Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Ghost whenever we find little foxes in the house, in the church, or in the world we are living in. Jesus will return soon. He will come for his church first, the chaste bride of Christ, before he allows the great tribulation to start on earth. He will then return on his second coming with the church to destroy the unbelieving world. He will then set up and rule his millennial kingdom here on earth. He invites everyone to escape the coming wrath and be with God the Father. Admit you're a sinner for not believing in the blood shed by Jesus. Repent and believe in this gospel. How that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. You must repent and believe the gospel with all your heart. Pray for wisdom and understanding of the Holy Bible as you study and let Jesus lead you in truth and spirit. Jesus is waiting for you even today. The day of salvation is now and today. God bless and have a wonderful week.